In many cases, furnace startup actually begins with establishing the flow of process fluid or charge. This step should normally be done before the burners are lit. Otherwise, the empty tubes that carry the process fluid could become overheated by the burner flames. Control valves regulate the charge flow in a furnace, and establishing the charge flow involves properly lining up the valves in the process fluid system. In multi-pass furnaces, there's often a separate valve arrangement for each pass, so you'll need to check the valve positions in each pass. For this furnace, a pump is started to get the process liquid circulating. With the pump running, the control valves for the process fluid are set as needed. The flow is verified by checking the appropriate instrumentation. If the process fluid is a gas instead of a liquid, you may need to start a compressor rather than a pump to establish flow. A furnace may seem most dangerous when it's operating and flames are burning inside. In fact, many of the furnace explosions that have occurred happened during startup when the burners were being lit. So it's critical to follow procedures carefully when you're firing up a furnace. The first main step in lighting the burners is to light the pilots. To be safe, the operator checks that all the appropriate valves for the individual burners and pilots are closed to keep unburned fuel from entering the furnace. Unburned fuel creates a potential explosion hazard. For this furnace, the steam purging valves are closed before the pilots are lit. But the stack damper should be left in the full open position to provide adequate draft for light off. It may also be necessary to leave the burner air registers open to allow enough combustion air into the burner. For this startup, all the burners are going to be lit. However, at reduced firing rates, some of the burners may not be used. At reduced firing rates, the air registers for the unused burners are closed to keep unwanted air out. The pilot fuel may come from the same source as the burner fuel, or it may come from a separate source, which is the case here. In either case, the appropriate fuel valve is open to get fuel to the pilots. A pilot header routes the fuel to the individual pilots. Before the pilots are lit, there are some safety considerations to keep in mind. For example, it's important to have the necessary safety gear. Face shields and fire-resistant gloves are often required. Different facilities have different safety requirements. For this furnace, two operators are needed to light the pilots, one to open the pilot valve and another to insert a torch into the burner. In this case, a non-combustible absorbent material is wrapped around the end of a torch and it's soaked with a fairly heavy fuel, like kerosene. A lighter fuel, like gasoline, might ignite too easily. When the operator with the torch is ready to light, he gives the go-ahead to the operator at the pilot valve. With the torch in the burner, the pilot valve is opened. The pilot should ignite easily. The remaining pilots are lit just like the first one. It's a good safety practice to light all of the pilots before lighting any of the burners. If a pilot won't light, you could have unburned fuel in the furnace, which is explosive. If a pilot fails to light, you may have to close everything down and purge the furnace again to get unburned fuel out. When the pilots are lit, the burners can be ignited. To do that, the fuel valves will have to be lined up as indicated in the startup procedures. Outside operators and control room operators work together to light off the burners. The goal is to bring the charge temperature up gradually so metal parts won't suffer damage from heating up and expanding too fast. In addition, the process fluid that's circulating through the tubes will carry away some of the furnace heat. This also helps prevent abnormal expansion in the furnace. The control room operator usually has manual control of the firing rate during startup. This lets him bring the furnace up to operating temperature at the proper rate. In gas-fired furnaces, the fuel header is pressured up with fuel gas before the burners are lit. This makes it easier to ignite the burners. To get fuel to the header, the operator opens the fuel flow control valve to the proper position. Header pressure is monitored from the control room and at the furnace. When the header pressure is right, the outside operators light off the first burner. The fuel valve for the burner is opened slowly until the burner lights off the pilot. The burner produces a distinctive sound when it lights. With experience, you'll get to know what to listen and look for. It may be necessary to increase fuel flow to the burner to get it to light. When more heat is needed for the process fluid, the control room operator gives the okay to light another burner. 
The remaining burners are lit like the first one. To reduce the risk of explosion, burners should always be lit from their pilots, not from adjacent burners. The operators will light the burners in a staggered pattern. The burners are lit in a staggered pattern to provide a good distribution of heat in the furnace. If one burner goes out while the others stay lit, it may be necessary to shut off the fuel to that burner for a few minutes to let the fuel burn off and then relight the burner. When all the burners are lit, fuel flow will have to be increased to reach the desired charge temperature. As fuel flow is increased, the air registers may have to be adjusted to get the proper flame size and pattern. To do this, one operator checks the flames while the other works the registers. They use signals to communicate. When the burners are firing properly and the process fluid is at its normal temperature, the system is switched over to automatic control. From now on, changes in the process fluid outlet temperature will automatically trigger changes in the amount of fuel sent to the burners.